one, though, may be the most important of them all. Now, I know it seems a clunky, old-fashioned thing. It was invented in the 19th century. Let's take a look inside. The first thing to note about this motorcycle battery is that it's heavy. That's because it's tightly packed with lead and lead oxide. Indeed, the toughest part of engineering often ends up being balancing the trade-offs in a design. For example, a car battery does a great job starting a vehicle, but not running one, like an electric car. Nor is it a good candidate to store energy from solar panels on a house. There, we harvest energy from the sun, charge up the batteries, and then use the stored energy in a variety of ways until the batteries die, and then recharge them with the sun's energy. For this use, you would use what is called a deep cycle battery. As the name implies, this battery's capacity can be largely used and then recharged easily. It would seem that we'd want to get rid of the lead acid battery. It poses a significant environmental risk if disposed of improperly. What's so great about a lithium ion battery? Why uh, is this seem to be in more and more modern technology? Well, it has an excellent energy density compared to uh, lead acid batteries. It can store um, the same amount of energy and weigh about three times less and be about six times smaller uh, in space for the same amount of energy. So that's a really great benefit of lithium ion. Hence. Uh, it's, it's used in things like cars, electric cars, because you don't want to have a really heavy, really large lead acid battery in your car. You don't want, uh, weight is, is the enemy of cars. So that's what lithium ion does a great job of reducing weight for electric cars. Higher voltage. This single cell of lithium ion produces 3.7 volts. So if you want more than 3.7 volts, you simply stack them together, like I described in my other video on uh, batteries, and you add up the voltage. So, versus a lead acid, which produces about 2 volts per cell. Uh, minimal memory effect, or virtually no memory effect, so you can discharge it about halfway and recharge it, and it's not going to affect uh, the battery at all, um, compared to something like uh, a lead acid battery where you're discharging it, uh, or some other types of batteries out there, which do have memory effects. And then finally, it, it charges much faster than a lead acid battery, so it's another benefit. Um, obviously, when you want to refuel your electric car, you don't want to sit around forever, so lithium ion allows you to charge that battery faster. Hi, guys. I will try to demonstrate in this short video why lithium batteries are better choice for energy storage than lead acid batteries. There is the misconception that lead acid are at least better option from an economic perspective, but as I will try to demonstrate here, it's a wrong assumption. I wanted to use multiple batteries on each chemistry in this comparison, but I decided that there is not a big difference and a large number of batteries may create confusion, so I decided to use uh, just one example for lithium and one for lead acid. For lithium, I used uh, A123 systems, the 20 amp power prismatic cell, since it's popular, you can find a good data sheet and I even own a few of them. For the lead acid, I chose the Trojan L16RE, since it's a popular battery, maybe not as popular as the T105 variants, but uh, it has a better price for the amount of energy stored. The life cycle at 100% depth of discharge is more than 3000 for the A123 and less than 800 for the Trojan. Then energy that can be stored during the lifetime of the battery is more complicated than it's calculated here, but uh, I want to keep things simple, so uh, you get that by multiplying the 100% depth of discharge life cycle to the capacity in watt hour, and you will get um, the stored energy during the theoretical life of the battery. The price per installed capacity is what most of you take in consideration when purchasing a battery and it looks like lead acid is uh, almost half the price but this is not the right way to compare batteries. A better way of comparing batteries is to use price per energy stored during the lifetime of the battery and then things look quite different. Now the lithium battery is less than half compared to the lead acid battery. 
There are much more parameters that you need to take into account to make this an accurate number, like the charge-discharge efficiency, uh, the battery degradation over time and other factors, but all this will make the lead acid look even worse in uh, comparison with a lithium iron phosphate battery. There are numerous advantages in using lithium iron phosphate as uh, energy storage, especially in solar application. One important one is that partial charge is desired in lithium iron phosphate but will deteriorate a lead acid battery. I will try to give some more advantages of lithium versus the lead acid batteries. Uh, one of them is that lead acid is extremely inefficient at charging and discharging in average around 70% compared to over 90% for lithium. So you will need a larger solar array to cover these losses. Also a much larger uh, battery capacity because of the losses, but also because the lead acid doesn't like to stay uh, deeply discharged for long periods of time. Another advantage is that in cold climate, uh, you can just have the lithium battery inside with no venting, no gas get released during charging or discharging. Uh, for the lead acid, on the other hand, you need a vented box because of the hydrogen. And if vented, you either have cold air from outside into the box that will uh, dramatically affect the battery capacity and the life. Or you hit the box, but uh, that will require a lot of energy because of the venting. That energy can be significantly higher than what you use from the battery, so it will add to the cost of operation. Lead acid will also take more space and be much heavier. This is not usually a problem in a stationary application, but it may add something to the shipping cost. 